oral questions. Question oral, honorable. The honorable member for Megantic, l'érable. Mr. Speaker, masks are coming off on public transit in Ontario, and they'll soon be coming off. Coming off in public transit in Quebec, provincial governments have listened to the recommendations of their public health experts, Mr. Speaker. Vaccine passports have been lifted everywhere, except to fly, to work in the federal government, or to enter the parliament buildings. It's getting so ridiculous, Mr. Speaker, that... Liberal MPs are coming to ask the Conservatives not to talk about it anymore because they're afraid that the Prime Minister isn't willing to admit the opposition is right. What's wrong? Why is the Prime Minister following political and not actual science? The Honourable Deputy Prime Minister. Mr. Speaker, please allow me to thank Canadians for the sacrifices that they have made to get through this pandemic. It is our collective action that has gotten us through. Canada has the second lowest rate of mortality in the G7 and the lowest unemployment rate in over 50 years. It's thanks to vaccines and public health measures that we have been able to see these results. The Honourable Member for Megantic Lérable. It's incredible the talent that the minister has to not answer questions. What's the difference between being crammed into a subway and lining up at an airport? In the subway, people are in very close contact whether they're vaccinated or not, and public health is okay with that. In an airport, everyone must be vaccinated, must continue to wear a mask, and the prime minister has no science to justify that, Mr. Speaker. Does the prime minister consider that the public health agencies of the provinces who are responsible for health care are wrong? Every public health agency in every province, are they all wrong? Or is he the only one who's right, Mr. Speaker? Why does the Prime Minister insist on maintaining these out-of-date measures? The Honourable Deputy Prime Minister. Mr. Speaker, the incredible talent here is the talent of the Conservatives to not understand that it's thanks to public health measures that it's thanks to vaccines that Canada has succeeded in our fight against COVID. Mr. Speaker, if the United States had Canada's vaccination rate, they could have prevented almost 700,000 hospitalizations and 163,000 deaths. The Honourable Member for Megantic Lérable. Mr. Speaker, no concrete response for Canada. Let's talk about something concrete. As shootings multiply in Montreal, the Liberals are so eager to release criminals that they're muzzling the opposition to ram through Bill C-5, which eliminates mandatory minimum sentences. Listen to this, Mr. Speaker. My mother and I, after supper, we had to go inside and hide because of a shooting. Shot after shot after shot after shot was fired. And that's a, a Montreal resident who said that to the media. We're not talking about a war zone. We're talking about a neighborhood in Montreal, Quebec, Canada, Mr. Speaker. Why would the Liberals rather help criminals than reassure this Montrealer and all the people of Montreal. Premier Ministre. The Honourable Deputy Prime Minister. Mr. Speaker, what we prefer is to take concrete measures to limit uh, firearms in Canada. Handguns. And, Mr. Speaker, it's absurd to me to listen to these questions from Conservative members who are against the important measures, the historic measures that we are putting in place. The Honourable Member for Barry Innisfil. Conservatives believe that meaningful and effective steps must be taken to end gun violence and gun crime in Canada. Canadians need to be safe and victims of domestic violence need to be protected. While there are aspects of Bill C-21 that we can agree on, specifically on domestic violence issues, the rest of the bill falls short and will do nothing to end gun violence. Will the Liberals agree to split Bill C-21 into two bills? One to protect the victims of domestic violence, while the other aspects of the bill are reworked to offer real and effective solutions to gun crime and gun trafficking. The Honourable uh, Deputy Prime Minister. Mr. Speaker, speaking as a member of Parliament for downtown Toronto as a, and as a mother of teenagers who live in my riding, I want to say very clearly, we will never water down our measures on gun control. We know that these are essential to protect Canadians, and I just wish, wish the members opposite would stop their posturing and would join us in saving lives. The Honourable Member for Barrie Innisville. 
Well, divisive policies don't protect people. Fear doesn't protect people. Virtue signaling doesn't protect people. The Liberals are using U.S.-style wedge politics for their own political gain and won't keep Canadians safe, and it won't stop violence. Conservatives will be putting forward a sincere offer to split Bill C-21 so that victims of domestic violence can be protected as soon as possible. We can work together to get this done, but it's up to the Liberals. They have two options, either accept the offer to protect victims immediately, or they can reject it and continue with their divisive rhetoric and leave victims vulnerable. The Honourable Deputy Prime Minister. Mr. Speaker, you know what protects Canadians? What protects Canadians is banning military-style assault weapons, which have no place in our society. What prevents Canadians is limiting access to handguns. And I'll tell you what is entirely insincere. The Conservatives' fake concern for Canadians who are victims of gun violence. They could support those Canadians by supporting our legislation. Yeah.